All right, so as you can see, I have all of the wiring run to the boxes. Um, <clears throat> most of the circuits are already installed, or the receptacles. Got a couple up there along the ceiling that haven't been done, and I haven't installed the receptacles on this conduit that I added to the wall. And the conduit that I used was EMT conduit, and it's different than the rigid conduit that you see. Basically, the difference is rigid needs to be threaded and have fittings and everything needs to be perfect. <clears throat> it's also got a thicker wall. It's a little more expensive. EMT doesn't need to be threaded. You use these little screw connectors and so then you just cut them to length and install them into the screw connectors. Um, it's a lot cheaper than rigid and it's a lot more like PVC where PVC is you just cut and glue but EMT is even cheaper than PVC uh, like for for instance these little boxes here they're only about 90 cents a piece each one of those connectors about 50 cents a piece and 10 foot of this half inch EMT conduit is only two dollars and so you don't have to go into the walls if you don't want to, as long as you're okay with the industrial look here, which I am since this is going to be a workshop. And um, it should look nice and tidy once everything is all done. What I'm doing right now is I'm planning on running that same five circuit pattern here over on the ceiling for the lighting. And let's see if I can catch this on video but you can see I've already struck a line right here and that is going to be the line that I follow when I run my conduit and then I'm gonna have five rows of LED um, bars that are gonna run four feet apart and running this direction and hopefully that'll be enough light for this and we will find out soon enough well, I'm about to turn the power on in this place for the first time, but before I do that, I thought I would uh, kind of recap what I did. So on that far wall there, we have two circuits running through a single run of conduit. We've got a whole bunch of circuits on this back wall, which is kind of like the sound buffer wall that I built. And then this separating wall also has a few circuits on it. In all, I did uh, 24 receptacles and one light switch. Now the main power I have coming in um, from the main panel and then it goes into these disconnects. And uh, from the disconnects, um, I run them up into their own individual sub panels. The reason I did the disconnects is just an extra, just an extra air gap um, in order to uh, be sure that if I'm ever doing work on these sub panels that I'm safe because I can pull out the disconnects. Now, this, here's something that's interesting. Um, they At Home Depot, they're phasing out these GE disconnects with this Halex brand disconnect. They're both the same price, but if you take a look at the GE disconnect, it's uh, got a metal protective panel or whatever you want to call it. that's where the wiring is behind that and it's got a really nice phenolic um, you know the actual disconnect portion is made out of this phenolic uh, material everything's very rigid and stiff now over here in the replacement one this is all just ABS plastic here and I mean this thing is pretty flimsy as well not really impressed um, so if you ever are in the market for one of these and uh, you, s you have to choose between the Halix brand or the GE brand, I would suggest you go with GE. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these right now because I'm about to turn the power on. What I have up here, um, two sub panels. One sub panel here has just three 220 circuits. The second one has one 220 circuit. And then I bought these duplex breakers so I can actually get two circuits off of each breaker. 
Um, it really depends on your region whether or not you can use these, whether they're up to code or not. And it just so happens that it does work in my region and it's allowed. Okay, next step complete. The uh, both all the walls, both the walls, whatever you want to call it, are insulated. So they're ready for drywall. I only used R11 insulation, which was very cheap, which was good. I probably spent maybe $50 on the insulation for this whole space. And the reason I went with R11 is because the space is already insulated. All the walls are already insulated. And um, so the the walls that I built, in addition to those walls, I just needed a little bit of insulation, maybe for a little bit of sound dampening, and to help uh, keep the conditioned space in here conditioned, as opposed to this space, which is just a garage. It does, in here, man, it does wonders for dampening the sound. I don't know, as, there's no echo in here right now. I know once I put the drywall back up, there's gonna be echo again, but it's pretty cool how this insulation works. So there it is. Next step is going to be the drywall.